wanted to uh, take a look at a topic that frequently um, isn't necessarily explored in depth, but it's a very important topic, and it's a, a topic that's somewhat shrouded in mystery because we haven't yet experienced it, and that is the Messianic era, the coming of Mashiach, what the world will look like when Mashiach comes, and what everyone's uh, role will be in that world. So I want to um, look at a couple of aspects. One, who is Mashiach? What will he do? Um, what's, what's his role? What will change in the Messianic era? Will nature be the same? Will nature be different? Will we still have free will? Um, I want to explore that. And also, um, continuing our series of non-Jews in, in Jewish law, I wanted to take a look at um, what role non-Jews may play in the Messianic era. Will everyone accept Judaism? Will non-Jews be left behind? Or will there still remain Jews and Gentiles? So the belief in Mashiach, even without necessarily all of the details, which we'll see are somewhat uh, subject to, to disagreement or there are a range of opinions, um, but the belief in Mashiach is one of the 13 principles of faith that uh, we have a version, I believe with perfect faith in the coming of Mashiach, and even though he may tarry, I wait for him every day. So this is a fundamental, fundamental principle that there will be, as we'll see in the first source, there will be a person who will come and, and he will do just certain things and that will um, mark and lead to our redemption. So the question is, who is Mashiach? Who is Mashiach? What will he do? What kind of person will he be? Um, so the Rambam sets out certain basic criteria. He says in, in Source 1, this is in the Laws of Kings, he says, Vim yamod melech mi beis David, If a king will arise from the house of David, hoge v'torev osek b'mitzvos k'david aviv, he contemplates Torah and he observes the mitzvos like his ancestor, King David. So he has to come from the Davidic line. So it can't be a Kohen, it can't be a Levi. It has to be someone from a descendant of King David. And he, he uh, is, a, is a Torah scholar. And it says, Kevi Torah and Torah He is a mastery of all of Torah. The Yaakov kol Yisrael lelech ba ulechazek vidka. And he will compel all of Israel to observe the Torah. So it seems like part of his role is he's a scholar, he's a teacher, and it sounds like one of the things that Mashiach will do, and it uses a word for, for compel, he will in some way convince or maybe even enforce Torah law. But basically, under his reign, in his career, he will, he will influence the Jewish people to observe Torah law. And he will fight the wars of Hashem. And most basically, that means uh, the wars of Amalek, being involved in, in Gogu Magog. Um, he will he'll fight those wars. And, and he will, in order to, to be Mashiach, he will have to be victorious. And it says if he does those things, then he's becheska uh, su Mashiach. He meets the basic criteria to be Mashiach. So he is from the house of David, he's a Torah scholar, and he compels the Jewish people to observe mitzvos, and he fights the wars that are obligatory in the Torah. If a person does that, we have reason to... Um, suspect that he might be the Mashiach. He'll so far have uh, checked off some of the major boxes. But the Ramah continues, Im asav itzliach, uvana mikdash bim komo, if he's successful in all of these things, if he, and he builds the Beis HaMikdash in its place, in Yerushalayim, v'kibetz nidcha Yisrael, and he gathers in the people who are scattered among Israel, he brings everyone home to Eretz Yisrael. Harezeh Mashiach bevadai. He does that. So if you want to, if you're looking for Mashiach, if he's a Torah scholar from the house of David, uh, compels all of Israel to 
observes Torah and fights the uh, the wars of, of Hashem, so then you have reason to, to think, okay, this person might be Mashiach, we're, we're getting somewhere. Then if he builds the Mesa Mikdash and brings everyone back to Eretz Yisrael, then you can, uh, then you can be certain. It says Vada, you can be certain if he does that. The talking Esa Olam continuing, the talking Esa Olam Kulo la Vod Es Hashem biyachad, and he will um, unite the world and motivate all of the nations to serve Hashem in unity, to recognize Hashem. Shenemar, he az efoch elo amim, safa brua, likro kulam bishem Hashem, ulabdo shechem echad. It says, uh, first from the prophet Zephania, he says, I will transform the peoples to a pure language that they all will call upon the name of God and serve him with one purpose. So we'll look at later on the role of uh, Jews and non-Jews. This may have to be two parts because uh, there's, there's a lot to discuss. We'll see, we'll see how much we get through. But from what we've seen so far, does it seem like just Jews will uh, benefit from Mashiach? Who will be around when Mashiach is, is here? So it's unclear. It could be. I think I could read it two ways. It can either be when he says, I'll transform the peoples to a pure language that will call out upon the name of God. Maybe that means that you'll have Jews and you'll have the other people of the world accepting the seven mitzvahs b'nei Noach, and that will be recognizing Hashem. Or it might mean, as we'll see, some do understand that there will be many people who will convert to, to Judaism. It depends how depends at, at what point. Maybe that past a certain point they can't convert, but at the very least, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get to that later, but at the very least now, um, we see that Mashiach will come, he will raise awareness of Hashem, he'll build the Beis HaMikdash, and that person has the uh, criteria to, to be Mashiach. So, next question is, you know, we say we want Mashiach now, we want to bring Mashiach, there, there's, there's that kind of idea. So what is, is there a concept of doing something to bring Mashiach? I like, so he'll come when Hashem wants him to come, but, how do, but are there certain conditions? Does the world have to be in a certain state for Mashiach to come? So there's a question. Maybe repentance is a precondition. After all, Mashiach is bringing about the, the final redemption. He's, he's bringing goodness to the world. Maybe we have to be worthy of receiving Mashiach. At the same time, we have one of the 13 principles of faith is to believe that Mashiach will come. So we have to believe as a fact, Mashiach will come. So what if we're not worthy? So in source two, the Gemara in Sanhedrin says the following. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Im Yisrael osin teshuva, if the Jewish people on a whole repent, Nigalin, there will be redeemed. Vim lav, and if they don't do tshuva, ain't nigalin, they won't be redeemed. Amr le Rav Yeshua, Rav Yeshua said, Im ein osin tshuva, ain't nigalin, is it the case that they don't do tshuva, so then Mashiach is not going to come? One of the fundamental principles of our faith is that Mashiach will come. So what does it mean that if they don't do tshuva, Mashiach won't come? Ella, rather, what does, what does uh, Ray Lezer mean? HaKadosh Baruch Hu ma'abed lahem melech shekzeiro sav kashos kehaman. Rather, he'll put the Jewish people in a position where they will be um, under the dominion of someone who has harsh degrees like Haman. They'll be victims of, of great persecution. V'Yisrael osin tshuva umakzirin lemutav. And in response to that, they'll do tshuva. So it sounds like tshuva in some way is a, is a precondition, but it sounds like it's going to happen anyway. Either we can do it out of Avas Hashem because we love Hashem and because we, we know it's the right thing to do, or apparently, if God forbid we don't do that, we'll be subject to persecution. And so no, that persecution will inspire us to do tshuva. But it sounds like either way, that we will, res- we will achieve somewhat of a state of tshuva and Mashiach will come. Either it will be more difficult or it will be, it'll be easier. But that's as far as the idea that's um, you know, become more, more popular that I see we don't do mitzvos to bring Mashiach. We do mitzvos because the Torah commands us to do mitzvos. But the idea of 
doing mitzvot or strengthening observance as a way to um, make us worthy of Mashiach is something that we see is grounded in, in very classical sources. That not that you do a mitzvah and this mitzvah will bring Mashiach, but on a whole, if, if the Jewish people uh, repent, realize Hashem, and, and strengthen their mitzvah observance, so that, so that will prepare the world, that will put the world in a state that is um, deserving of, of accepting Mashiach. So that's one, who is Mashiach? Uh, two, how do we get there? And the next part um, is what will change in the Messianic era? What will the world, like, what would the world be like? Will nature be the same? Will we have free will? You know, we talk about Mashiach, it you know, happens in the, in, in the future. Sometimes we, we, we speak about it, um, but what exactly will happen? So I want to look at, at two parts within that. One, will there be any difference even in, in nature? And two, what about our free will? Will we be able to sin when Mashiach comes? Will, will we be perfect? Will we have a Yitzhahara? What will the value of mitzvahs be? Can we improve ourselves? So I want to take a look at, at some of those questions. So even if you go back into the Gemara, even the sages of the Talmud acknowledge that at the end of the day, we don't really know what the days of Mashiach will be like. We don't really know what the world to come would be like. There's a question that could be a whole, whole different discussion. What is, is the world to come the same thing as Yumos and Mashiach discussion between the, the Rambam and the Ramban? But just as far as the, the days uh, of Mashiach, so the sages of the Talmud um, said that there's a lot we don't know. If you look in source 3, the Gemara in, in Brachos says, The prophets only told us um, general things about the days of Mashiach. But, but Olam Haba, the world to come, which may be the, the state where there's no, there's no physicality, at least they, if we go according to the Rambam. So according to the Rambam, the world to come will be, once Mashiach comes, that will be a physical world. People will live very long lives. And then after that, they'll go to a world that's where there's, ne- where there's no drinking, no, phys- no phys- physicality. And, but that's something that we know that the, the righteous people will be able to bask in the, in the uh, presence of the, of the Shechina. But ultimately, we don't really know so much about it. Um, and Shmuel says, Upligid is Shmuel, Damar Shmuel, Ein bein olam azeh li yimosa Mashiach, ela shibud malchios. Shmuel says, really, and this is, we'll see the Rambam takes this approach, that not much will change in the days of Mashiach, right? We're all sitting here, a table's going to be a table, we're going to be here, but we won't be persecuted by the nations of the world. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be relieved from persecution, and we'll see the Ram says we'll be allowed to study Torah and, and uh, live in the service of Hashem. But it sounds like other than that, there won't be any fundamental difference with, with nature and with, with the way the, the world is. And a proof for this can be brought from a uh, verse in, in Dvarim, in Sefer Dvarim. It says in Source 4, Kilo yechdal avion. This is for there will never cease to be a needy one. We care of arets in the in the midst of your land. Al kain anochi mitzavcha. As therefore I command you, lay more pasoach tiftach as yadcha laachicha laniyacha ule avion ule avioncha beretzecha. He says there will never cease to be needy people. Which is why I command you, open your hands to the poor and to needy kinsmen in your land. There's always going to be poor, he says, there's always going to be uh, poor people to take care of. And this is even will be in the end of days. So it sounds like some of the other physical challenges that we have now will also exist at the end of days. There will always be poor people. We're, we're always going to have to do chesed and look out for each other. It sounds like that will be something that is not necessarily going to change in the times of Mashiach. On the other hand... Um, 
or it depends how you interpret it. If you look at source five in in Vayikra, it says Venatsasi Shalom Ba'arts Ush Ushkaftem Vein Maharid. Um, I will grant peace in the land that you shall lie down untroubled by anyone. I'll give you the land, the uh, respite from vicious beasts, and no sword shall cross your land. So it says there, that there's going to be uh, peace, but it also says there will be, apparently, no wild beasts running around. Well, that scene sounds like more than just release from persecution. You know, how do you get the, you know, if there's a tiger in the street, how do you, is that going to change? You're not going to have wild animals running around. So, in fact, the, in, the, in the second page, the, the Midrash in the uh, Sifra has two opinions, how to, under, how to understand what we just saw. Midrash in Source 6 says, uh, You will lie down and not, and not be frightened. So, You won't be uh, fear of any creation. And it says, I will eliminate vicious beasts from the land. So Rabbi Huda Omer, he says, Mavir min ha'olam. Rabbi Huda says, what does this mean? That these wild animals, these animals that harm us, they won't exist. Yes, you know, they're endangered species. It doesn't sound that, uh, very good. It sounds like the, 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 the types of animals that will be a threat to us won't exist. And Rabbi Shimon Omer... He says, um, brings a proof, but he says, doesn't mean that they won't exist. So he's, because he says, what's more impressive? Hashem eliminating something or Hashem controlling the world to such an extent that they won't be able to, to harm us. So he says, rather, what does it mean? He says that, according to Rabbi Shimon, he'll prevent them from, from causing harm. And the, the, the Ramban says, what does it mean that they won't, that, you know, the Mashiach comes, the land, Eretz Yisrael, will be inhabited, it will be comfortable to live, it will be a peaceful existence, and the wild animals won't come and, and attack. So not necessarily supernatural, but it sounds like there will be a certain protection, even for physical harm, that will um, increase in the, in the Messianic era. But there's a question how to understand it. Will there be a change of nature where certain types of beasts won't exist? Or is there a, uh, just an additional level of, of protection? So the Rambam, and we see consistently, really takes the approach uh, that we saw of Shmuel. That really the only thing that will fundamentally change in the days of Mashiach will be that we won't be persecuted. I don't want to say only because uh, that's a pretty big thing, but he says that will that will ultimately be what the days of Mashiach what will happen in the days of Mashiach. But what do you happen? What what do you do with the uh, verse in the Yeshayahu Isaiah where it says the wolf will dwell in the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the young goat, right? What do we do with that? That sounds like if that's describing the days of Mashiach, it sounds awfully different. It sounds like there will be. They, a change in the in the nature of animals and even who they who they mate with. So the Rambam says he he addresses this. He says in source seven, Al Yala Al Halev, don't let it uh, come to your to come, come to your mind. That any of the natural order will be nullified or will be changed. Oh yeah, Sham Chidush Masev Rashis or any any difference in creation. Ella olam kemin hago noheg. Rather, the world, the, the natural order will will continue. Possession emar be shayahu. And so, what does it mean that uh, the the wolf will dwell with the lamb, etc.? He says mashal vechida that it's a parable. It's meant to, to teach us a lesson. Inin hadavar shiu Yisrael yoshim levetach im rishe of the kochavim and mushalim kezev v'namir. He says, what does it mean? Not that literally the wolf will dwell at the lamb, but that we'll be, uh, we'll be able to dwell securely with the, with the Gentiles who currently uh, persecute us. And that's what it means. Not that literally there will be some this, this change in, in nature. And 
And what does it mean when it says, and a wilderness shall spoil them, and a leper will walk, will stalk their cities? It says, V'yachzur kulam l'dasa emes. So all return to the true faith. And the question is, will that be the true faith, meaning the Jewish faith, or just a monotheistic faith? And, and they'll act ethically. V'lo yigzilu v'lo yashchisu. They won't, uh, they won't steal or destroy. Ela yochlu davar amutar benachas im Yisrael. Rather, they'll uh, eat permitted foods, and either that could, you could interpret it as, uh, as kashrus, or maybe just um, in Aver Menachai, that non-Jews aren't allowed to eat. But uh, they'll, they'll, they'll come to a recognition of, of Hashem, and they'll live in peace with, with Israel. So it actually sounds like there will be other nations as well. So maybe it's that they accept the seven Noahide laws, which includes not eat, having Aver Menachai, limb from a torn animal. So they'll observe those. They'll observe those meticulously. They'll recognize God's presence in the world. And he says, So all of the things that we find in the prophets about supernatural or differences in natures, those are all um, just just uh, parables, but they're, they're meant to, they're meant to, or metaphors, they're meant to, to teach us, they're meant to represent there will be a peaceful existence, but not that anything will, will change. So why do we want Mashiach, right? We want Mashiach now, right? Why do we want Mashiach? Why do you want Mashiach? For peace. The, the Ramam says in Source 8, the, the sages and the prophets didn't uh, yearn for the messianic era not to have dominion over the entire world so we're not just using this you know because we want to you know we want to have a king and we want to take over the world no that's not that's not why we're looking forward for mashiach that's not why we learn we yearn for mashiach and not to uh, you know rule over the the gentiles and to uh, be exalted by them, to gain honor from them, not to eat and drink and be merry, rather without having to worry about persecution with certain types of threats, we'll be free to, to learn Torah. We'll be free to learn Torah, we'll be free to be involved in the service of Hashem, without the other types of, you know, distractions and considerations that we have. Asu, it would seem that the Raman would still say we still have to, you know, go to work, make a living, that things won't just come falling from the sky. But without having to, you would think, how much more money would countries have if you didn't have to worry about defense? If you don't have an army, right? You have a lot more time to do stuff. You'd have a lot more, a lot more resources. You know, we invest so much into even just on a, on a, on a national level, international le- level, with security and this and that, we don't, have to, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about Israel's security. We, don't have, we, 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 can, we can live in peace. And that will free up you know, much, of our, much of our energy, much of our worrying. And that will be the um, great personal benefit to us that we can involve ourselves in Torah. And we can do this. Lo yelahem noge'esem so then we can earn merit for olam haba. Now, in the, the Rambam, the Rambam considers olam haba that final stage, that it's a, it's a non-physical world. So basically, in the Rambam's understanding, what will happen is those who, will, who are um, in olam haba now will be brought back to life for Tchiyas Mesim, will live very long lives down here in a physical world, but in a perfected world, and then will go to Olam Haba, which is the ultimate final destination. You can maybe look at another time, the Ramban has a slightly different order of things, but we'll, we'll stick with the, with the Rambam, that's, that's what he says. So, how do we, lear- how do we earn Olam Haba, we learn it. We earn it by by doing mitzvos, by in, by serving Hashem properly. The fact that in the messianic era we'll be able to do that more effectively, that will help us reach our ultimate goal, our ultimate destination of the world to come. So he says, really, why do we why do we want Mashiach? So that we'll have time to learn Torah and we'll be able to earn more merit for 
for for the ultimate for the ultimate world, we're a world of, of basking in the in the, the Gemara says to bask in the uh, radiance of the Shechina to have the ultimate pleasure, the ultimate spiritual pleasure. That's where we're ultimately going to go, and the days of Mashiach will allow us to prepare for that more effectively. So then, the question is whether it's um, nature's change has stayed the same, or what exactly the order of, of, of things are. Um, we, you know, we've, we've read and we've discussed about how the world will be perfected when Mashiach comes. There'll be a, a knowledge of Hashem by all people. So, so what does that mean? Does that mean will we be able to sin when Mashiach comes? Will we have a Yitzhahara? Question. So, the look at the the Gemara in Sukkah, um, source nine. We actually saw this earlier in the year when we um, talked about the issue of a mechitza in the shul. It's actually also from this Gemara that we learned the requirement for a mechitza because it mentions a big funeral at the end of days, and it mentions the men and women are sitting separately. So it's also the Gemara says if they have to sit separately at such a solemn event, so all the more so at, uh, when it was this, you know, Simchas Beis Shueva. but so we actually saw this Gemara in that context, but um, it says at the end of days, so what are the, the, the um, prophet Zechariah says that they're making this, there's going to be this great eulogy, so it says, what is this, what is this eulogy? So Pligi Bar Rabbi Dosa Verabonin, Rabbi Dosa and the rabbis uh, disputed, Chad Amar al Mashiach ben Yosef, Shenerag. So one says that this funeral will be for Mashiach ben Yosef. So we talked about Mashiach ben David. Mashiach ben Yosef will precede Mashiach ben David and will be a, will not fulfill all of these requirements, will be sort of like a, a preliminary uh, sort of Mashiach. So one says that it will be uh, Mashiach ben Yosef will be killed in the, in the uh, war of Gog and Magog prior to the ultimate redemption and the coming of Mashiach ben David. So that's, that's one opinion. The other one says there will be this, this funeral, it seems like more metaphorical, but of the evil inclination that now it's been, it's been shechted, it's been killed, it no longer exists. And then Marsha, one of the commentaries I noted here, said that they'll cry up, why are they eulogizing the Yitzhahara? Aren't we happy that the Yitzhahara is gone? So Marsha says that we'll cry because now we don't have the opportunity to earn further reward. When you have Yitzhahara, so you, you earn reward by uh, resisting the Yitzhahara, by overcoming the Yitzhahara. So he said in some ways it will be a sad occasion when the Yitzhahara is destroyed because then we won't have the opportunity to uh, to earn additional merit through, through our struggle. But maybe it'd be better because we're not we're not transgressing. But it sounds like, at least according to the second opinion, that in the days of Mashiach, or even before Mashiach comes, there will be a slaughter, so to speak, of the Yitzhahara. Sahara. Indeed, the Gemara says in Source Ten, the Gemara in Shabbos says, Rabbi Shimon Elazar Omer, Shimon and Elazar says, Asa Ata. Um, he says, perform mitzvahs while you still have opportunities and while, while you're still in your means because uh, Shlomo Melech said in, in Kohelis, he says, remember your creator in the day of your youth before the days come and you'll no, have no desire for them. So it says um, that when it says the evil days in, in um, Ecclesiastes, so it says, in, it says that these are the days of Mashiach, in which there's neither uh, merit nor liability. So it sounds like you, you know, everyone will do, be doing the right thing, but because there's no Yitzhahara, so do, necessarily doing the right thing isn't, doesn't necessarily show that uh, isn't necessarily an accomplishment. So it's saying, so Malik is telling us the Gemara is learning, do do mitzvahs while you can. Now we still have an Yitzhar, take advantage. Um, you know, use it for for, for good. Um, and Shmuel, we saw and we saw Shmuel before. Um, Shmuel says Shmuel says uh, as we as we saw before. 
Um, he says, no, presumably disagreeing with the fact that um, there won't be this type of opportunity for transgressing and mitzvahs one of the same value. He says, no, that, that, that won't necessarily happen in the times of Mashiach. What will happen in the times of Mashiach, we won't be persecuted. So we see that that's Shmuel's opinion. Um, but we have a, a pasuk Moas uh, uh, that Hashem will uh, will circumcise your heart. So what does that mean? Hashem will will uh, circumcise your heart, and it basically means in some ways he'll he'll uh, remove a type of impurity from us. And the Ramban says in in source eleven, Mizman Abriya Haisa Rishus Biyad Adam Lasos Kirtsono Tzadik of Russia. That from the time of creation, man was given the freedom to do as he desires, to be righteous or wicked. The Chalzman Torah came today. Yelahem zchus v'chira sam betova onash b'ratzonom bara. And the entire period of of Torah, which is the second uh, two thousand years um, from when the from when the Torah was given. So in that whole period. Uh, choosing good will be a merit, and choosing wickedness um, would would uh, warrant punishment. Aval, but Yimosa Mashiach, Tia Bechira Betov Lahem Teva Velo Yisave Lahem Halev Lama Sheino Roy. But in the days of Mashiach, um, the choice of good will become will become natural. Lo Yakbod spoke Klal, and we won't have any desire for evil. So. Apparently, according to the, the Ramban, which sounds not necessarily like the, the Rambam, that, that we go like this first opinion, that we what, that in the Messianic era, we won't have a Yitzhahara. Maybe, again, maybe we'll um, have the ability to you know, be careless, and maybe have to bring a sin offering if we do something inadvertently, but we won't have, the Ramban is understanding, a, the type of evil inclination to want to sin intentionally. He said that will that will be uh, fundamentally different. And just to um, reiterate the the level of of peace and the recognition of of Hashem when Mashiach, when Mashiach comes. So we have the, the prophecy from, from uh, Micha, from Micah, that um, it says that the, that the nations will say, They'll say, Let us go to the mountain of Hashem, as base uh, um, okay, Yaakov, and to the, the, the base of Mikdash, the, um, the house of the God of Jacob. The Yorenu Midracha Venelcha Be Orcho Sav that will um, will you'll know, teach of, of his ways and we will walk in his paths. Kim Mitzion Tesei Sora Dvar Hashem Yerushalayim and from Zion shall go forth Torah and the word of Hashem from from Jerusalem. And it says Veshafat Bein Amim Rabim Vachiach Legoyim Atzumim and he will judge with many nations. Um, and will uh, clarify for my needs is Ad Rachok Vikitu Har Karbosechem Litim, and uh, he'll go um, from afar and said they'll beat their swords, and swords into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not raise up sword against nation, no longer shall they learn war. So it'll be this uh, beautiful recognition of Hashem. All the people will. We haven't seen necessarily what uh, they'll necessarily be Jews, but they'll go up to the to the base of Mikdash. They'll recognize the centrality of, of the Jewish people, and 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 that will be um, you know what we'll experience in the days of Mashiach. So now I wanted to uh, explore. We we spoke about uh, the idea of. No one oppressing the Jewish people, of everyone recognizing of the world as a whole, recognizing Hashem. We say in the end of Aleinu, Lesakin Alab of Malchus Shaddai, to, uh, to fix the world and, uh, and for the uh, dominion of, of Hashem. 
the Chol Ben Yimbasu Yikuvi Shmecha, and all of the flesh will call, uh, you know, will call out your name, that we have the idea of, of the entire world recognizing God's sovereignty. So, so does that mean that they'll all be Jewish? Somewhat, so, so, we'll, so we'll look at some of the, um, both from the, from the Talmud and from, from the Devi and from the prophets, and you seem to see indications both ways, but what's somewhat surprising is there seem to be some indications that there will be people who will actually convert, that there will be people who will actually um, join the, the Jewish religion. So, and the question that this also um, begs is, well, what's the Jewish approach to proselytizing, right? Other religions, they're, they're very big into that, right? We don't, we don't really do that. We have an option of converting, um, but the, the Gemara says, and the Shulchan Aruch says, if someone comes to convert, we try to discourage them. We tell them that uh, you were... When, when you were, uh, when you were a, a Gentile now, if you violate Shabbos, it's fine. If you eat forbidden fats, it's fine. You're going to be a Jew. There could be a serious punishment. And, don't, and we say, don't you know that the Jewish people are you know, downtrodden and oppressed? We try to discourage them. And Mar says that they say that you know, they, if they submit, then they want to uh, convert, and they want to convert, so then we, go, then we accept them, we convert them, and they become a member of the Jewish people. So it's something that we're certainly open to. We're not like, um, you know, like there are some religions that don't accept converts at all. So we certainly accept converts and certainly admit it to love a convert and to, to make a welcoming environment, but it doesn't seem like we uh, go out and proselytize. That could either, I think that could be twofold. One, it's the fact that there, there are seven laws for the rest of humanity and we consider if someone follows that, they're you know, certainly on a, on a basic level, fulfilling, fulfilling Hashem's will. And two, you're going to put someone in a, in a if we were going to go and you know, force people to convert or pressure people to convert, you'd have people who'd be in worse situations. They wouldn't be sincere about it. And either conversion wouldn't be valid or they would, or they would accept it initially and, they, and then they would you know, violate the Torah and they'll be in, in worse shape. So we don't, we don't generally go out and, and, and look to convert people. Which makes this this um, section from this this following Gemara pretty pretty interesting, because it says in in source thirteen, Gemara in Pesachim says, "Amar Belazer lo igal Kadesh Baruch Hu Yisrael levein umos levein ha umos ela kadeshi tosu alehem gerim." He said Hashem didn't exile only exile the Jewish people among the nations so that uh, converts would would join them. Because it says, "Klum Adam Zorea saw Ella Lahachni's Kamakorin that a person only um, sows a uh, amount of grain to bring in to bring in several." Um, so the exile is to able is to enable us to and this idea that wheels that will be spread and then knowledge of Hashem will will spread and this idea that we get some we get some uh, benefits from it that we get that. More people will join the Jewish nation. In fact, the Gemara says that that's the seems to be the uh, the the reason of exile or the, the the benefit of that will come out of, of exile. So that it makes the question is why we why we don't go look for for converts. Maybe the idea is we'll make ourselves available. But it sounds like do we do at least put a value. We certainly put a, think it's valuable if someone else wants to join the Jewish people. We consider that something that if someone makes a choice, that it's something that we, that may even be, even be why we're exiled and the purpose of our exile. So even though there, um, if someone is, is fulfilling the will of Hashem who's not Jewish by observing the, the seven mitzvahs, it sounds like there is something to be gained by converting. I guess that's why there is an idea of conversion. So, I'm going to go through some of the some of um, 
places where the different prophets speak about what will happen um, in the, the times of Mashiach with regard to the you know, humanity on a whole. So in source 14, it says that there will be an altar of Hashem in Egypt and a monument of Hashem at her border. And um, so he'll send them, this is speaking about in the end of days when Egypt is be persecuted and then, and then relieved from that, uh, from that persecution. And he says it will be known in Egypt. It will be known in Hashem will be known in Egypt. On that day, and um, the they will serve Hashem with sacrifices and gifts, and will and will make vows, certainly vows to to bring offerings, and they'll fulfill it. So it sounds like they're being even the inhabitants of of Egypt are in some way being involved in worshiping Hashem and worshiping of Hashem. Sounds like Jewishly. Whether or not they'll do it themselves, or they'll or they can maybe bring uh, karbanot themselves, or they'll actually in some ways join join in with the with the Jewish people. You look also on uh, source fifteen from Isaiah. He says, "Vahaya mide chodesh bechat show," and it'll be that that every month. And every Shabbat, it'll be that every month and every Shabbos, all, all flesh will come before me. So you have people observing seemingly Rosh Chodesh, Shabbos. You know, these are mitzvahs that are very much uh, unique to the Jewish people. So it sounds like there may be some. Um, Incorporation of you know the non-Jews who recognize Hashem into into the Jewish people. Look at source sixteen. You know this could really go either way. Um, it says from from Zechariah it says Vahaya Kol Hanosar Mikola Goyim and all who remain from all the nations Habayim Al Yushalayim was sent against Yushalayim but Alu Mide. Shana v'shana, now they'll come every year, lishtachavos lamelech Hashem tzvakos, and they'll bow to Hashem v'lachog eschag hasukos. And they'll celebrate the holiday of Sukkot. We had the 70 nations come in and bring karbonos, so it may mean that they're not, nece- they're not necessarily Jewish, but they're, they're, they recognize Hashem, and they're coming, and, they, and they, they're uh, sacrificing in the base of Mikdash, there's some discussion among the commentaries. Maybe they'll have, maybe they'll even be um, non-Jewish priests in the in the base of Mikdash. Not not like the Kohanim, but they'll be doing certain things. That that even the non-Jews will be some of the some of the commentators on um, Yeshayahu say that the that the non-Jews will actually have a function in even the spiritual working of the of the base of Mikdash and of the Jewish people and those commentaries understand that they're not that means that they won't actually convert but they'll recognize Hashem and they'll be and they'll be involved in fact um, the source that says that if the non-Jewish nations knew the benefit that they would get from the base of Mikdash they'd be you know running to build it that it's something that will be a house for for everyone, and uh, it'll be a benefit to everyone. If they knew how, you know, they wouldn't be trying to, you know, destroy it or prevent it. They would, you know, they would be running to build it if they knew the value. They realized the value that it would have. And um, have in uh, source seventeen. And this maybe sounds once you get to to Shabbos, that's something really that's unique to the Jewish people. So it sounds like there is something that's they have some sort of closeness to the Jewish people, if not at least some of them joining the Jewish people. It says, source um, seventeen, Uvnei Nechar Anilvim Al Hashem the Sharso, all the foreigners will come and uh, and, and serve him. Lava as Shem Hashem, and will love the name of Hashem, Lioslo Lavadim, to be his servants. Kol Shemer Shabbos Machalo, Omakzikim Vibrisi, 
all who observe the, the Shabbos and strengthen my covenant. Could be that it's uh, Chris Mila. And we say, and they'll, um, they'll bring them to my mountain and gladden them in my, in my house of prayer. And their burnt offerings and celebrations um, will be desired upon my, my altar. And my house will be a house of prayer for all the nations. I think uh, in one of like the primaries or pre-primaries, uh, Cory Booker uh, quoted this. The, the U.S. is one of the candidates probably not going to be nominated about it. But uh, he, he quoted this. I guess he has somewhat of a knowledge of Hebrew and of the, the Bible. So at some sort of uh, event, he quoted it. And you know, it's pretty, his pronunciation was not, not bad. So uh, you see, but this is something as we're trying to make that point is that, uh, you know, this is that uh, the, it sounds like the vision of Yeshayahu is to have a world and even the way the, the temple will function will be something that's available for all nations. But the fact that, um, you know, that we speak about things like, like Shabbos and the covenant could indicate, as, uh, you know, we'll see from the next source, from the, the Navi, uh, the prophet Sephania, that maybe at least of some of them, there will, some of them will convert. In 18, it says, Ki az efel el amim safa brura, and I will convert the nations to clear speech. Likro kulam b'shem Hashem. They'll all call out b'shem Hashem in the name of God. La'avdo shechem echad. And will, um, and will serve him with united effort. So it says, efoch el hamim. It literally means like overturn or reverse. It's understood to, to mean convert. So it sounds like there will be um, either nations or at least large groups of people who will actually be converted or who will really choose to convert to, to Judaism. And that will be part of what will happen when Mashiach will come. So this next... Uh, verse from Zechariah in source 19 it says Vinilvu goyim rabim many joy um, many nations uh, Hashem will, will join Hashem biyomahu on that day the am and they will be a nation to me vishachanti bisochech and I will dwell among you viadat ki Hashem tzvako shalachani elayach and you will know that Hashem has sent me to you so what does it mean that when it says uh, uh, goyim rabi mel Hashem, that, that uh, multitude of nations will, will join God? The Malbim says, there's one commentary, but he understands that to mean in 20, she's gairu v'kiblu das ha-emes, that they'll convert and accept the religion of truth. That refers to Judaism. So it sounds like what Zachariah is saying when it says that the nations will will join God, it means that, that there will be other nations that will, it sounds like, collectively convert to Judaism. And the Ibn Ezra in Source 21 says a, it's a matter of a frightening thing. It says that that two thirds of the world will be eradicated. And the last third will be tested. Um, and the, the survivor will uh, be the servant of Hashem and will come, uh, then come every year. To uh, you know, to Yerushalayim and um, to to serve Hashem. And it doesn't necessarily say anything about um, conversion per se, but it does sound like they're you know, it's it's a uh, kind of a, so, a sobering thought with with all of this. But it sounds like there will be at a, at the point when Mashiach comes, there will be some sig- significant population of the world that will be left behind. They're left behind because they won't accept Hashem, but it sounds like not everyone will, you know, join us in the in the messianic era. At the same time, we clearly see that 
one has an opportunity to join us and he, one doesn't even have to formally accept accept Judaism. And uh, there are many, many, uh, you know, this is a scratch the service, but there are many ideas that the non-Jewish nations will even, there's even um, a concept that they'll, you know, be, be servants of Jews, they'll want to be partners in the service of Hashem, even if they have a different role, even if they, let's say, have less mitzvos and have a less prominent place, there's an idea that when Mashiach comes, the nations of the world will want, will recognize that the Jewish people are the chosen people and that Hashem is the true God and will want to, will want to help with that, you know, with that effort. Um, and so, so that's something that there will be, you know, a, a overall recognition of Hashem. Um, but what about, what about converting when Mashiach has come, when Mashiach has established himself? So the Gemara in Yavamos in Source 22 says, he says, Tanar Abbanan, the sage is taught, in Mekablin Gerim Limosa Mashiach, um, that in the days of Mashiach, when the world is established under Mashiach, we won't, we will no longer accept converts. Kiyotzebo, lo kiblu Gerim, lo bimei David, lo bimei Shlomo. Just like we didn't accept, Mark tells us, we didn't accept converts in the days of David and Shlomo because we were concerned that this is when the Jewish people are on top. And you know, everyone would want to join us because of our position in the world. That's what we tell them now. Our position in the world isn't so prominent anymore. We're persecuted. But at a time when the Jews were on top, we, we put a, uh, I guess a, a, a temporary ban on conversion. We didn't accept converts at that time. So a similar rationale would apply in the times of Mashiach. We'll say, why didn't you, if you really want to be Jewish, why didn't you notice it before? Now it's easy to see that the Jewish people are the chosen people. But we will say, even if they're, if they're, they're around and they have a role, but at a certain point we, we won't accept converts. Um, because, and, and this is actually a powerful, I think a powerful statement about um, really the, the value that we have, that we, that we uh, place on on converts, because it really shows that that those who convert, it's really a heroic thing. He says, "Amar Belezer, my kra heavy gor yagor efes meosi ki gor itach alai chipol." So it says, "When do we accept uh, accept converts?" Quotes from uh, from Isaiah: "Behold, they may gather together gor yagor, but without me. Whoever shall gather with you shall fall on yours." So it says the word gor implies that only a convert, a ger, who becomes part of the Jewish people when the Jews are living in exile at a time when Hashem is not clearly revealed, i.e. without me, are considered part of the Jewish people. So it sounds like really what converting is, and it's, and it's really an amazing thing, that even at a time when the Jewish people are, are not prominent, in a time where God is not revealed so clearly in the world, but people still want to join the Jewish people. Those are people who we, who we really consider and value as sincere converts. But it says, "Aval But at a time when it's so apparent that the you know Jewish people are, are prominent in the world, so then the system of conversion doesn't really doesn't really work. So, and this is just uh, you know scratches scratching the surface. There's there's, there's plenty more afterwards. I can give you some some links and some books. There, there's, there's much on it, um, but we do have a um, mentioned really the, a fundamental of our faith is to is to yearn for Mashiach, to wait for Mashiach. And we see that there will be the great benefit to the entire world when Mashiach comes. Well, we'll have freedom from from persecution. We'll recognize Hashem, and that's ultimately why we want Mashiach. We even want more than the benefit that w- that it will. Um, Give to us, we say really Hashem being hidden, it's a it's a hill Hashem in many ways. Hashem is not recognized. Um, it seems like his people are, are are downtrodden. And we want Hashem's glory to be apparent in the world. And when Hashem's glory is apparent in the world, people will be will be motivated to to serve him properly 
and and we'll have, as the Rambam says, we'll we'll have opportunities to focus on the things that are important, and uh, hopefully we should uh, get there in a in a way of of uh, sincere repentance, of repentance without needing the the extra the extra push and. Uh, and uh, here at Vimeinu, we should we should experience it. We, the rest of the world, and uh, we should experience it very soon.